In this alternate universe, the West was won by trying a bunch of ideas so crazy they just might work. And if they don't, hitting the quick load button and trying something even crazier until you pull it off. Weird West is one of those games that feels like a stealth and combat playground, even as it tells five mostly serious, well-written stories with interesting decisions throughout and a thoughtful conclusion. And with so much ground to cover and replayability to explore, it's well worth putting up with some quirks and an underwhelming loot system. This dark fantasy western plot is tied together by a group of shadowy figures transferring your character's consciousness into various unsuspecting bodies. It's a clever play on the way so many games have us take control over a character who already exists in that world, but still need to bring us up to speed on their identity. Here, our character is going through that exact same confusion. Another layer of the mystery is that our character is also an amnesiac, which adds some appropriately intriguing weirdness to Weird West. In a lot of ways, this game takes me back to the glory days of Fallout 2, and not just the isometric perspective. Although the tone is generally played dark and straight, with murder, mutilation, and blood everywhere. The writers at Wolf Eye have worked in some good humorous dialogue here and there that keeps things from getting too dour. There's also an overworld map where you're pulled out of travel for random encounters like bandit attacks, traveling merchants, and a witch who just likes to mess with you. We begin with Jane the Bounty Hunter tracking down her abducted husband, followed by a forcibly mutilated pig man searching for the truth about who he used to be, a protector of the Lost Fire Tribe battling a greed demon, a werewolf who was prophesized to lead his people into a battle for survival, and finally a cult member. They all take place on the same large, dense overworld map of a region known simply as the West. And while there's not a ton of overlap between where their main quests lead them, they're all free to explore and revisit anywhere and anyone. There are no character stats, so each one's playstyle is largely defined by their four class abilities. There's definitely some personality to the bounty hunter's super kick and landmines, the pig man leaking poison, or the werewolf being a freaking werewolf. There's also a universal set of useful weapon-specific skills, like electric pistol bullets, silenced rifle shots, and stun arrows that must be leveled up for each character. All of that resets when you switch to a new body, though. However, there is a persistent perk system that gives you a good sense of progression between the first act and the last, thanks to enhancements like more health, doubled explosive damage, higher jumping, and faster stealth movement. Between that and a couple of shared loot stashes, you're never back to square one. While it's kind of a bummer that you can't switch back to directly controlling a previous character if you miss their abilities, that's an understandable limitation when you consider how the story works as a sequence of events. You can, however, go back to their homes and recruit them as one of your two AI-controlled companions. But the AI doesn't use their abilities with the precision they'd need to be really useful in combination with your own. There's also an added tension from the fact that these irreplaceable companions can permanently die when things go bad. And go bad, they often will. Gunfights with more than a couple of adversaries get hectic quickly, since everybody moves pretty fast and the lead flies faster. It's effectively a twin-stick shooter, and rapidly aiming and firing while managing your lengthy reload times is a tall order. However, there's a slow motion button that takes the twitch reactions out of fights. With this activated, the real challenge becomes managing the amount of time it takes to swing your gun from one target to the next and, of course, timing your special abilities for maximum effectiveness. Also, you can do this sweet move. Pros will know to do this before a fight breaks out, but I relied on slow-mo to give me the time I needed to really take advantage of the environment. Weird West is as much an immersive sim as it is an action game, so you can expect plenty of opportunities for physics-based antics. Between fire, electricity, oil, water, and poison, there's a lot of forces to mess around with, and I love when a plan, or a completely accidental win, comes together. It's important to know that there's no XP gained from killing in Weird West. It's often just the easiest path forward when you're feeling confident. That's a wise design choice because it means that if you prefer to sneak through the whole thing and pill for your upgrades, you won't be missing out on progression opportunities. If you're patient, there are almost always chances to thin the herd of enemies by knocking them out and stashing them one by one. WolfEye says it's possible to go through the entire campaign without killing a human, but I'm a long way from pulling that off.
There are plenty of people in the West in need of your assistance. The first act's villains are cannibals who round people up like cattle, after all. Beyond simply being a nice thing to do, a benefit of choosing to help the helpless is that the people you've saved can randomly show up to assist you in tough fights later on. It's a great reward for a good deed, serving as both a bonus and a reminder of your recent adventures. The flip side of that is that characters can form a vendetta against you and show up to make things a little tougher. I've even had significant characters show up as optional bounty targets after their role in the story was complete. That's a cool touch. I spent a lot of time gathering loot, whether it was picking over corpses, rifling through the shelves and poorly guarded cash registers, mining ore, or digging up suspicious mounds of dirt to reveal treasure caches. There's stuff everywhere. And exploration is almost always generously rewarded. You also have the freedom to profit by unscrupulous means, such as robbing stores by breaking in at night, digging up graves, or just murdering people for fun at the cost of reputation. And, just like you'd expect, when that gets low enough, a bounty gets put on your head. That said, much of the actual equipable loot you find is a little disappointing. There are rarities of weapons, for instance, but each tier simply does more damage. And no matter what gear you equip, you won't see any changes reflected on your character model. Also, if you're a loot hoarder like me, you'll quickly run into lots of inventory management as you're forced to decide what to drop in favor of that shiny new item. That made me wish for a quicker way to access my companion's inventory. This reminds me of Fallout 2 in a less favorable way. And of course, it's not bug-free, but what Immersive Sim is? Remember, that quick load button is your friend for avoiding anything that feels unfair. Oh. That spirit walk and medicine's working like a charm. The larger story wraps up in an interesting way that makes your big and small choices along the way central to a high-stakes event, rather than a showy boss battle. It's a good call that serves Weird West well. I'm told that if you're just charging through, you might reach that point in about 25 hours, but I took closer to 40 by going off the main path to explore, collecting quite a few bounties, and seeing what the West had to offer. I was not disappointed. I was excited to start a second playthrough on hard mode, too, because at the end of each chapter you get a recap list of your decisions and achievements as that character. It looks like a lot of small changes that can add up to a big difference. And while I'm just a few hours in, I've already found many things I missed on the first playthrough, including stumbling on a talking doll who asked me to help break its curse, winning a duel, and finding a rare amulet that gave my bullets a chance to set targets on fire. And I've already taken alternate approaches to several quests. Like I said, there's a lot of ground to cover. Weird West more than lives up to its name in all the right ways. Playing through its five stories and reaching their collective conclusion produces a wagon load of bizarre encounters, twists, and reveals, and its straightforward stealth and chaotic combat are challenging but come with the built-in safety nets of unlimited slow motion and an old-school quickload system. Sure, it comes with its fair share of limitations, managing a lot of mostly dull loot and typical bugs, but exploring these wide open spaces feels like striking gold a lot more often than not. For more, check out our reviews of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands and Ghostwire Tokyo. And for everything else, stick with IGN. <laughs>